Hey everyone and welcome back to this Wikipedia. Uh, in this episode we're going to be using a common household item to create an air box for our short RAM intake on the Mazda. Uh, now if you know anything about air intakes you'll know that there's a short RAM intake uh, otherwise you can have a cooler intake otherwise you can just have your stock air box uh, but there are upsides and downsides to both. Uh, the reason you might want a short RAM intake is because it's less restrictive, so the air's got less paths to go through in order to get into the engine, mix with the fuel, ignite and create your power. Now, the downside to this is because it is so close to the engine, there's a lot of heat from the engine that's gonna get sucked in, a lot of hot air sucked into your air filter and obviously flowing into your engine. And as we know, hot air is not as dense as cooler air. So the reason you might want a cold air intake, which generally will sit down behind the bumper somewhere, usually lower to the ground, uh, is because you will get that cooler air coming in. But at the same time, there's probably more piping, so it's gonna be a bit more restrictive. And you also risk sucking up uh, water or mud or whatever. I know on my previous car, I had a cool air intake. Uh, and when I eventually took it out, it was sort of, caked in just crap from that had come up from the road. Um, so there are upsides and downsides to both. And obviously with your stock intake, it's designed to be as quiet as possible while still getting that cool air in. Uh, but that usually makes it pretty restrictive. They usually have a few bends. So we're gonna play with our short RAM intake. Now the common household item that I've got lying around is this, I've already cut it up. And in case you're wondering, yes, it is a toilet seat. Um, don't worry, it is clean. Now, the reason I use this is because I had it lying around. I mean, most households are not gonna have a spare toilet seat just sitting around. Uh, but if you've seen my other videos on this channel, you know that I recently put in a toilet seat with a bidet. And if you're interested, you can go check that out. I mean, I do do a lot of other things apart from automotive on this channel, uh, but obviously you've come here for the automotive stuff, so we'll move straight along. Uh, so what we're gonna do is do a couple of test runs. We're first gonna take it out just as it is, uh, do a couple of test runs, see how that works out, and then we're gonna come back, slip this filter over, which is basically just gonna sit over the top so there's a bit of shroud cover our air filter and this part's just gonna sort of cable tie in here. Now obviously this is not a permanent setup. This is more of just a test to find out whether or not this is gonna give us any useful results. Uh, so once we've done all those testing and data logging, we'll come back and check out our results. The tripod is very sticky. Check out our results. Might even break out the whiteboard and plot a few graphs. So see what we come up with. If it does turn out that the makeshift cold air box makes a large difference, then I'll probably consider getting, you know, a proper air box for this vehicle. The only problem is these days they're a lot harder to find. I mean, this car's been out of production for about 10 years. So uh, those aftermarket parts are becoming more and more rare. Um, but yeah, like I said, this will only be a temporary option just to see what results we get. So let's give it a go. Uh, I'm gonna do the data logging with the Talk app for Android, uh, which will be connected to the OBD2 connector. So we will do that and go from there. Okay, so a bit of a change of plans with the custom air filter box. Uh, it didn't seem to make much difference. I took it out on a couple of test runs, both with and without it installed, and the results were pretty inconclusive. So I'm gonna ditch that whole thing. It's a bit disheartening, but if it doesn't make a difference, what's the point in doing it? Um, and we're gonna look at other options to increase that cool airflow into the air filter. Um, so looking around the engine bay, the main thing that I noticed uh, that was left from the 
install of the air intake, air intake uh, was this, which is the air intake resonator. This sits below the air box in the stock setup. Um, so here you have the stock air box and this usually sits below in the vehicle like this. Um, so when I upgraded to the, the Cobb short rim intake, uh, there wasn't any instructions about removing this resonator. I mean, it's pretty out of the way, but it does sort of block off any air that's gonna come up from the ground. Um, so hopefully that's gonna make a difference. I mean, I'm not necessarily gonna do a bunch of more test runs. Uh, I've sort of had enough of that for now. Um, but this is more just uh, something that's annoyed me for a while, just having it sitting there. And I mean, Cobb didn't obviously include any instructions about removing it, um, but the rest of the instructions are very detailed, so I'm not gonna fault them on anything. Um, but it is one of those sort of annoyances that I've always looked at after I put the other air intake in and thought, you know, I, I just wanna get rid of that thing. And seeing as the original intake's not in there anymore, it doesn't make any sense to have the resonator in there. Um, so looking around the areas, trying to figure out how I can get more cool air in here. Um, the resonator was the main thing I noticed. So normally it would sit down in that gap in the panel here, just down in here. Um, so I've removed that. Uh, as I said, I'm not necessarily going to do any more comparison test runs, uh, but we will go through how to remove that piece. Uh, so let's begin. Okay, so to get this resonator out, the easiest way to do it is to get your car jacked up, put it on some car stands, and get your airbox side wheel off. Uh, because you'll need to remove this shroud in front of the wheel. Uh, it's held in by about five uh, plastic clips and underneath there are four screws that also need to come out. So once you've got those out, you should be able to just pull this aside like so. Watch out for all the crap that's gonna fall out. Uh, and you'll see in here, so this is our resonator and it is held in by three bolts. So you've got the first bolt just up in here, they're all 14 mil. And then there are two other bolts, which are a bit trickier to get to. Uh, so I recommend removing the shroud around the fog light, just so you can see a bit easier what you need to do. Uh, so in here, Hopefully if the camera can view it, there is another 14 mil bolt uh, just here. And there's another one about uh, 10 centimeters above that. So you've got to get those two bolts out uh, and they can be a bit tricky. So I either recommend an offset ring spanner, otherwise you may be able to get away with using an extension bar and a socket and that'll hopefully give you try and get the GoPro up in there hopefully give you just enough room to be able to use the extension bar to get onto there uh, but once you've got those three bolts out that's it it should just pull straight out uh, so before we take that out we'll just get an idea of How much, how much that box sort of blocks things off. So with the light placed under the car, it's obviously very dark in here, but you can maybe able to see there's only a tiny bit of light coming through around the edges. This is the box right in between everything. Um, I'll try and just Set the GoPro up in here somewhere. I'm 
Right, that might have to do. So you can see that there's, there's not a huge amount of light that's able to get through. Um, so that gives you an idea, hopefully, of how much air can also get through into that area. Just remove the shroud again. And pull the resonator box out. Okay, so we'll pull this out. Put the shroud back in. All right, so now you should be able to see how much more light is getting through in that area. So obviously there's a lot bigger space that's opened up in here uh, so that should hopefully allow a bit more cool air to get up in through here and into your air filter whether or not it makes a real world difference I don't know um, but it's almost just one of those things where it's something that's been bugging me and if you're like me then near enough is never good enough um, so that's it, it's really pretty straightforward to get out as long as you've got the tools to get access behind there. And as I said, once you've got the stock air box out, the resonator's just doing nothing, just collecting dirt basically. Um, so that's really about it for this video. As I said, unfortunately, due to not getting the results with my custom air box um, I sort of ditched the, the rest of that video there was going to be a graph plotting the, the different curves so I was looking at readings from the mass airflow sensor uh, obviously RPM speed uh, the intake air temp the boosted air temp and the coolant temp um, but as I said, it turned out that it made so little difference that I couldn't actually tell. Like putting them side by side, you wouldn't know which one was which. So whether or not it would make a real world difference, I don't know. Uh, the temperature outside at the time was about 35 degrees Celsius. So it is the middle of summer here down under. Uh, so that probably played a big factor as well because the, the temperature in the engine bay wouldn't be, have been that much hotter than the temperature coming in. The biggest thing re with removing your stock air box is to get more air into your engine, less restricted air. So there have been a lot of videos out there testing, you know, cool air intakes. Um, and a lot of them found the difference to be incredibly minimal. Um, so I think generally a short ram intake is the better way to go. Um, it's just less restricted. You're going to get more air into that air filter and into your engine, mixing with fuel. Once you spark, boom. Uh, so hopefully this will help you out. I mean, even if you don't have the same car, you may, you know, rethink where your intake is and see what difference you can make to get more cool air into it. Um, but as I said, it's more about having less restriction. So in a way, putting an air box around your short ram intake may not be that beneficial anyway, because you are going to restrict some airflow from some area. Um, obviously, the idea is to restrict hot air going in, but at the same time, you're still creating a restriction. So as always, be sure to hit subscribe. Also hit the little bell button so you're notified when new videos come up. Uh, the next one is going to be looking at installing an oil catch can. Uh, better late than never, I guess. As these are a direct injection engine, uh, you're gonna have issues with carbon buildup on your intakes because you've got no fuel flowing over those intake valves. Uh, so we're gonna be looking at that too and giving our intake valves a bit of a clean. Uh, we're also going to do a compression and a compression leak down test 
in the same video. So we'll compare the results before and after of that one. So as I said, be sure to hit that little bell button so you get notified of when that comes up. Uh, and at some point we'll also go back to the, the Festi Ford. Uh, it's currently on loan, so we can't play with it at the moment, but there are gonna be a few more videos uh, basically detailing other things that you can do to get your car sold uh, for the best possible price. Um, so yeah, be sure to check that series out as well. Uh, but thanks for watching this Wikipedia. As always, please hit the like button. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and please feel free to leave me a comment down below. I'll always try and get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks.